I uh, just did shows from like graduation shows only, but I've also gone to open mics before. I'm just here to get better on writing, basically, kind of get that more down pat. Uh, and I'll be performing again for the first time at an actual place. Well, in terms of an open mic, not performing in a show or anything, but actually going to an open mic um, this Sunday. So nice uh well if you have a graduation Ooh, show did, then you've got what a five minutes three minutes set already done or what uh yeah but it was the material was like two years ago or something like that. <laughs> so it was it was it's like it's, it's it's definitely i like to rotate through my jokes a lot more faster and like most of the time they're uh, current events stuff so like the time that you could use them very you About know, two weeks yes exactly so. yeah I wonder, are you able to write your own stuff from two years ago, having taken that class? Like, or do you still need feedback from the teacher in that class on your new material? Uh, sometimes I talk to them on, on like feedback because I like them, you know, personally. Yeah. And so I, I, I feel like sometimes I need that feedback from them. Uh, sure. But I'm trying to develop my own ear because like I can't just rely on someone. I also have to feel good for the material. So I'm trying to your own go at ear. it you know go at it on my own a bit more because i've gone too much in in this vein the only reason i'm here tonight is just to get me back into that writing mindset of techniques and stuff getting back to the basics you know how like boxers go back to the basics when they're going up for a fight and something like that not that this is not that i'm going into a fight you know <laughs> yeah, no, it's just i don't know i've had some shows <laughs> <laughs> yes. But you know, boxer, boxer uh, technique when they're going back to the basic, they beat up children first. You know, they're, they're beat up teen. They have to become the bully all over again. Yeah. Then they get someone in their adult. Yeah. <laughs> I was about to say. You want to be a professional boxer, you start out by beating the crap out of kids. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. Yeah, because you got to get, uh, you know, solid against the uh, mm -hmm. compassion and empathy. You got to get rid of all that. You know, yeah, I, I got over that bullying I went through in, in elementary school. I went back to that elementary school and beat up every 11-year-old <laughs> I could find. Good for you. Oh, Didn't that yeah, feel good, so, kicking them in the and, You know, and, and I don't know what I was scared of. It was easy. <laughs> Who, who's short now? <laughs> <laughs> who's short now? Yeah, I was... Uh, I was, I was uh, uh, Always the shortest. I was always the youngest person in every class I was ever in. So I was always the shortest person because yeah, oh, I got wow. I got up September 15th. And so I was like right on the last day that you could get in in that mm -hmm. year or something. And so I was always like I should have been held back a year. <laughs> so I was competing with people that were a year older than I was most of the time. So, so the, re yeah. the reason we aren't talking to Steve is because we downloaded his a movie from 1952 because he's in black and white. So he's yeah, in he's, he's in a detective movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shay, uh, totally pl like play that. it again. Play it again, Sham. <laughs> like I'll say it for you. That. Do that again. Do that again. I'll do it for you. Play it, play it again, Shan. Oh man, you would be shit in ADR, <laughs> man. You can't do ADR for crap. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> oh, that's uh, automatic dialogue replacement for those that don't know. And Hollywood, everybody knows ADR. It's Victoria. It's great that you're here. We need <clears throat> female comedians. All right. Or and, yes, women. we do. I've been uh, doing. I'm oh, sorry. Yeah, you're doing it? multiple stuff, right? Yeah, yeah, more acting, but I'd like to do more of this yeah yeah, this. yeah you're, you're I mean, more in charge of it you only you the only, per, only one person has to say yes that's usually a person who has the room of the club you want to do acting there's like i'm an actress conventions oh, of people yeah. that have to say yes so uh, what did we lose uh, anchor, just left. anchor? i don't know it's ancor it's you know is that ancor what is he from cambodia where was that what was that where'd they go I don't yeah, know. Yeah, that's weird. He had to get hook another donkey up to the internet. <laughs> yeah, <that's laughs> the yeah, would have to. You know, those donkeys all have to walk in a circle in unison to get things going from there. Yeah, when they stop, the day's over, man. Business ends. <laughs> yeah, we we were expecting a few more people, so we're just trying to hang out. But uh, I think thanks, Steve, for what you're doing. Um, 
Yeah, and a couple of people had trouble getting on. Is that what's going on, Kev? Because we Steve had trouble getting on uh, first when he was trying to get here. Well, this all is- the people who are having trouble getting on are over 50. Just saying. No, just even. <laughs> <laughs> Kevin, I used to like you. I know. Hey, I'm over 52, and I hit that curve. <laughs> and I, I look at sometimes things the way my dad used to look at a calculator. You know, he could just be like, what? A calculator, yeah. He would. He'd be like, what, the, what am I supposed to do with this? I do yeah. everything by hand. Yeah, well, you know, it's. Uh, I, I usually use the abacus. So, uh, <laughs> That's what I heard. I use Nostradamus. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Remember those old said the Seiko watches of the 80s where they were the first real computer watches and stuff? Did you guys... Yeah, I was actually seeing the uh, release of uh, Napoleon, this this very old movie that uh, uh, that uh, what's his name? The guy that the Godfather and, his, and uh, it, anyway, they redid it and put it up. And it's this amazing movie. This guy did color and he did so way back when amazing movie. I'm sitting there in this huge auditorium to see it. And I've just gotten my Seiko watch and set it for a timer for like every hour it beeped or something like that because it was new. I'm sitting there and there must have been oh, five, six, seven hundred people in this auditorium. <laughs> and mine went dee, dee, like that. And then in this auditorium it started going like hundreds of them went off. Right? <laughs> I waited till the last one. I went, everybody, your clocks are behind. <laughs> and I got a huge auditorium laugh. So that's um, you know, I don't know if you guys collect laughs or not. I do. I've got uh, some. I've got zoo laughs, where I made a whole zoo laugh and and aquarium laughs, and uh, so let's make people laugh at different things and collect <laughs> them because they make great stories uh, to tell when you like go on uh, radio Greg, and stuff as a comedian. What time we got? Well, we Greg, got eleven I, after. Greg, I think they think you're already starting the free seminar about zoo laughs. <laughs> zoo laughs, yeah, that was the, the thing that comes out of your mouth is this is what we teach. It's like no, this is a sidebar to always go. Yeah, to that was a sidebar. That is, that is. The- yeah, no, yeah, actually, okay, okay. okay. I'll quickly, sign up. quickly with the thing, <laughs> they were feeding these giraffes, and if you started to feed him and pulled it back, his tongue was about almost three feet long. If you've ever seen that, and he would take his tongue and whack you upside the head with it, with his tongue, right? And I went. Oh, that's way too funny. I waited till the whole giraffe uh, compound just got totally full of people. Took off my glasses, went up there and fed that giraffe, started to feed him and pulled it back. And I'll be right on cue. Whap! <laughs> my head and goo across my eyes. And I'm walking around going, okay, here, here, have some more. <laughs> If you insist, I mean, got like a huge laugh and a couple of tags out of it too. So it was. Uh, That's great, was, you, guys. I just want you to know these are old man stories, and we love those. <laughs> <laughs> All so, right. I uh, think- well, we're gonna we're gonna start to do this, as it were. So, uh, let me share here real quick a couple things, and then Gayla is gonna come in and talk and. Yeah, oh, like- so uh, here we go, the presentation. Um, uh, first, if you have any questions, put them in chat, and then I'll be around at the end to answer all the questions so anybody has. Uh, and if they're relevant to what we're talking about, Kevin will insert them, even though I don't really like that word very much, that Kevin inserts anything. But that's what <laughs> hey. he'll do. It just kind of scares me, Kevin, the, the way you, that you, you know what- look. You, you know, should I mean, be scared, brother. I should be. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, because, you know, the only we, we had to coax him off of the set of The Hobbit uh, just to get him here. My okay. name is Bilbo Baggins. That's him. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> so put him in chat. Chat's at the bottom. Click on it. You can type in it and stuff like that. And uh, here's just some things some students are saying. And uh, there we go. Who's Greg Dean? <laughs> Someone told me there was free donuts. <laughs> I was actually on the way to my other gig, so I. 
Okay, just jokes. Greg Dean. Good, MC. <laughs> The number one important thing about comedy is your relationship with the audience. And that has helped me tremendously in improving as a comedian and as a person. And I think that, uh, I think it's changed my life, my whole way of thinking, you know, taking this class. And so it's been, it's been quite a journey and happy to be on it. A lot of times you'll see comedians get up there and just talk. And they might have funny material, but they're not connecting to the audience. And it makes a huge difference. And with your structure, I mean, I can tell funny stories, but if I don't structure it right, it doesn't get the laugh that you need from an audience that pays to see you as opposed to your friends. Um, but the number one thing that I think Greg and, and Gayla have, have taught me uh, is that I can do this and I can be successful at doing this. And they've given me a lot of confidence. And I look at comedians like your Eddie Murphy, your, your Robin Williams, and that's my type of personality. And I always wonder, like, how do they do what they do? And it's the structure. A cut, there are a couple of great things about taking this class. One is you get a system that's plug and play. And if you're stuck in traffic, you can take whatever is annoying you and put it through there and turn shit into fertilizer. Um, I love the fact that he, he didn't try to instill in you how to be funny. Uh, if you were funny, uh, great. If you weren't. Some of us have learned what that's like. <laughs> his, um, his techniques have helped me to see, you know, more about m who I am as a person in this world. You actually really care about us, which is surprising. Because um, <laughs> nobody in LA ever cares about their students. He's taught me already that having a chemical and cultural imbalance may not be uh, restrictive in terms of being a stand-up comic, uh, and, he, and I hope he's right. I always believe that most stand-up comedians aren't funny. And I took Greg's class, and because of the structure, now I can actually explain to someone why they're not funny. <laughs> Thank you, Greg. That is <laughs> hilarious explaining. Well, here we go. Free webinar. We have a couple of folks here and you are great. Thanks for coming. This is the seminar on building um, a comedy routine. Uh, congratulations. You made it. Um, you know, we're committed to working with you and we're doing this um, slideshow presentation to show you specific details on how we can present the technique to you. But we're right here live regardless. So tonight there's a few things that we're going to present to you, how to understand the skills needed to create a routine. We'll show you the skills needed to create a routine, explain to you uh, about joke structure. So you can write funny jokes, things that are your voice, things that you want to express, or things you see that are funny, how to write that, how to improve your material. You may have jokes already, you want to improve them, you want to tell funny stories, organize routines. And organizing routines, you might already have some jokes you want to put into a routine. How do you do that? How do you put it in there? Overcoming stage fright, there's a big one. <laughs> um, that sometimes that keeps people from doing anything in stand-up. Connecting with the audience, being more confident. We'll be talking about all of those things tonight uh, to kind of cover the basics for what it takes just to, for the first step to get you up there. And for your information, I know this presentation has a series of slides and we'll be showing you examples of technique, but if there's an you know, instinct for you to just go ahead and register and you wanna get in on this, we do start next week, you can register online. Uh, the the uh, link would be in the chat posted and you can sign up and you can get more information online on what's going on and when to get in the class. We only take a certain number. So people are signing up. We already have some people signed up. So if you want to, or you can listen to the whole thing or still there, do both. So who the expletive is what I like to say is Greg Dean. Is that guy that was just making jokes about, okay. Ladies and gentlemen, Greg Dean is best known by this book. If you can see it, I'm not even sure you can see me. Um, yeah, there it is. Oh, I have this thing on the back of my, okay, whatever. Step by Step to Stand Up Comedy. It's in paperback, ebook, audiobook. This green book is on the shelves at the bookstores. It's It's uh, been translated in Chinese, translated into Indonesian, and to be translated into Spanish coming up soon. Um, so he's known across the world. This book has traveled no matter what culture you're in, where you live. Um, 
it doesn't matter. Fundamentals are fundamentals. Greg's a uh, comedy store regular, the world famous comedy store in Hollywood, California on Sunset Boulevard. That is the comedy store. All the names of people who are regulars are on the wall. His name is on the wall right there at the entrance when you walk in. Uh, Greg Dean on the wall, along with greats like uh, uh, Stephen Wright and Robin Williams and Richard Pryor. Greg's been teaching comedy since 1982. Back in 1982, back before that, nobody was teaching stand-up comedy. It couldn't be taught. How do you teach stand-up comedy? You either have it or you don't. That's what we believe. You know, people believe that. So Greg was, is and was and always has been the first person that ever found a way to actually teach the fundamentals of stand-up comedy. So that's what I um, is, is that's why that's there uh, to let you know where this all comes from. He devoted his life to teaching after he's performed a lot in on as a regular. Give it up, ladies and gentlemen. Put your hands together for the professor of stand-up comedy, Mr. Greg Dean. Yeah. See, you took away my joke. Make it louder and longer. <laughs> yes, I, that's why I did it. Yes, you didn't want it louder and longer. I did it. That's it. It's a callback from yesterday. You got to really be with us all the time to catch every joke. Wow. Good job. All right. <laughs> well, uh, well, if we get one more person, we'll we'll increase our audience by thirty three percent. So welcome. Well, you guys get the same treatment. We don't care how it turns out. This is what we do, and so here we go. Uh, just let us know if you have to leave early, so we don't just <laughs> <laughs> ramble on forever. Yeah, make sure that you're still here, and we're just you know, so an introduction here for some stuff. Uh, back in 1982, there were no fundamentals. There was nothing. There was a book on how to write for radio. I mean, talking 1930s and 40s radio. Really, that was it. Uh, there was a joke writing system uh, called the two list system, which was uh, not very effective because uh, I'll, I'll tell you what it was right now. It's just uh, you, you, you pick a, tra a subject like hospitals and you make an association list and you give it a trait like it's torture and you make an association list. And step three was write jokes, which I already had a model in my head. So I wrote a lot of jokes, thought this is great. I taught it to my students and half my students like me wrote a bunch of jokes and the other half said, I have no idea what you want me to do. <laughs> I made these lists. And so what's next? Oh, write a joke. I don't know what a joke is. And that was when the light bulb went off was that, okay, if I'm going to teach joke writing, I got to figure out what a joke is. And it took me 25, 20 years, 15, 20 years to figure that out. It came slowly in pieces over time, not all at once. It was a long, uh, anyway, then I was like, well, I, if I'm going to find these fundamentals, what are they? And so I had to kind of start to create categories of principles, techniques, mechanisms. And then how do I find them? How do I go about finding them? So this was the process that I do. And I still do to this day, which is I identify a technique, let's say like for crowd work, uh, misunderstanding is a technique where somebody, the audience asks the audience something and they say something back and you purposefully misunderstand it. Once I was at the comedy store in Westwood uh, one many years ago and uh, said, are you two a couple? And the guy said, more or less. And I looked at the woman and said, he just said, you're moralless. Okay. And uh, it was on after that. And uh, so, uh, you know, and the bit went on for quite a while. <laughs> and I think I broke that couple up. Uh, and what's the point of doing comedy if you just can't break somebody up once in a while? What's what's the point? What's if you can't have some fun, you know, messing with couples? Okay, once I identify a technique like that in class, I teach it to you and you do it in class and you play it and you do it. And, you know, if you're into improv or anything, it's it's like improv, but it's for stand up. It's a specific stand up skill. Okay, uh, learn it and play it and do it until you actually can develop it as a skill. And all my stuff follows this paradigm. I, I, I teach this to you, then you practice it with us in class and at home alone or in wherever you're performing, and then you get the skill. So everything really for me comes down to skills in the end. Can you, are you able to do that skill? Uh, joke writing as well as performing techniques, okay? So 
that, and no, just know that everything that I do comes through this paradigm uh, and I define all my terms as well. So uh, it's all the exercises that you're gonna do are done in class with us. So that as you do them, uh, you could say, well, did you mean this, that, this, is this right? Or, you know, if I got it wrong, am I doing it? Did that? Yes, no, whatever. And we help you along with those. So it's never just, I'm not a believer in throwing people in the middle of the ocean as a way to teach them to swim. It might work, but I think it creates more terror than it does actually technique. So uh, anyway, we also create along with that a safe environment. I've created a thing called uh, what I call solution feedback. A short version of that is if you can't fix a joke, improve a joke, uh, help out a routine in some way, pitch a joke or a tag or something, don't talk. Uh, we only want solutions. I don't, we don't believe, I don't believe in that the negative side of things helps to go, oh, you didn't do that right. You know, uh, you don't need to be told if, if your joke didn't work, you already know. <laughs> you stood there in the roar of silence. You don't need some jerk off going, that joke didn't work. You need to fix it. <laughs> what you need is somebody to help you fix it. So that's what we do. And then along with every fix, we're going to explain the technique we're doing so that you can continually, again, not just learn the techniques, but able to do them for yourself when, you know, as you go along in this class, the more that we can get you to do these things, the more you have developed a skill. So we explain it. We don't just say, hey, we rewrite the joke this way because it's better. No, that's it. No, we rewrite this joke and here's the technique that it's based upon because if it's not based upon a technique, then it's just somebody's opinion. And that's that's good for them, but that may not be right for you. Okay, uh, uh, somebody's opinion is just an opinion. Uh, and then the last thing is the uh, open mics used to be the only way to learn to be a comedian. And that's just not true anymore with, the, with me coming in and doing this is with these fundamentals. The shortcuts, all the other things that are there, open mics, uh, they're a necessary phase, I think, to go through, but the quicker you can get through them, the better, and there's there are some ways to understand and get through that, so that's why we're going to talk about this, and Kev's going to talk about this. Go, Kev. All right, so sometimes people say, hey, why should I take a class instead of just doing the open mics? Well, first off, Open mics are the school of hard knocks. It just really is. There's nobody showing you what the fundamentals are. If somebody does something right, you have to figure it out for yourself and incorporate it in your own. And a lot of people end up mimicking other comedians. But we're, our goal is to give you fundamentals to help you communicate your unique sense of humor. Our job is to help you communicate at five or more laughs per minute. Yes, we count them. We count the LPMs. We give you a safe place to be bad because uh, it is a sometimes a very weird and uncomfortable situation, especially when you're just learning where the line of hate and that kind of pain and stuff like that. In other words, it, it's nice to know when it becomes drama as opposed to comedy. We give you some support on and off stage through our Slack community and our Facebook communities. And in our classes, you get to collaborate with experienced comedians. Many of the students in our classes keep their writing partners for years. So it's a good place to network and meet people. Um, this is what I was saying with the open mics. You can develop really bad performing habits. Go to an open mic, see how many people at the end of the show say that's my time. All of them say that's my time. What a horrible way to say goodbye to an audience. That's your time. You're not even saying that's our time. That's how selfish that is. <laughs> No, it's true. Um, Greg's students move quickly past the open mic phase. They get booked in good comedy rooms. Obviously, once people know that you're doing a good job, that you have a professional, a, a professional work ethic and a good show, they'll pull you along because everybody needs more comedians. You can't get from open mics what Greg can give you from 40 years of teaching and performing. You save four to six years of development time. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say you save five years of development time okay. <laughs> keep going kev all right so hey we're going to talk about understanding joke structure and this is we have to start at this place because we have to know what we're talking about so to start off we're going to use the term joke to refer to a single unit of humor so a joke is one single unit of humor that it it gets a laugh but it's not a laugh from nervousness and not a laugh from tickle. 
All jokes have two parts and three mechanisms, and in our classes, we'll show you that. Setup and punch are not joke structure. Many other teachers are actually saying it is. Setup and punch is just one way of expressing humor. You can express humor through comic strips. You can express humor through sketches. Setup and punch are one way but they are not joke structure the great thing is it opens up all the doors for you once you understand joke structure you can identify the joke that's an important one you can fix the joke and i think the most important thing is you can write jokes at will it's a horrible feeling to sit and look at a piece of paper and say i'm supposed to write i'm supposed to write i'm supposed to write i'm supposed to write we have a method five steps you go from five, step one to step five you're going to be able to write a joke on any topic all right, so you can wait for that bolt of creativity or you can learn how to write jokes anytime and on any subject. Greg has invented a special joke writing system. It's called the Joke Prospector System because you're mining for those golden jokes. Um, we also gonna teach you to learn funny storytelling. Now, a lot of people say, oh, well, I don't wanna do one-liners. That's, that's fine, people wanna do funny storytelling. But just because you say you're a storyteller, that's not an excuse for you to have less than five laughs a minute. You still have to have the structure to be a professional. We're gonna teach you how to rant to routine. It's one of the great ways of creating material. We're gonna show you how to write one-liners. We're gonna show you about observations and a whole lot more. This is just a very brief overview. You want me to take it, Greg? Uh, well, this is our, are you, am I behind you in this? Is Armando oh. showing? Yeah, this is right now, yeah, it's Armando. Oh, okay, yeah, so yeah, good. Yeah, go ahead. Continue You're doing great. So this is, a, this is a, uh, one of Greg's students, Armando oh, Anto. Okay. Hold, hold up, Greg, for just a second. Sorry. He, uh, he is a concert violinist from Europe, and he understands the importance of technique. And he sat down and did everything Greg said, and within a year and three months, he was a paid headliner because he knew how to he knew the dedication that it took to implement the technique and to have results because he had already experienced that as a violinist. Let hear, let's hear a little bit from him. Uh, a sad love song uh, and it means my love for you is eternal I can actually oh, wow. <laughs> And obviously he demonstrated a very good skill. Bring what you have to the stage. He brought his violin to the stage and it works really, really well to communicate his individual style of humor. I'm gonna play. Here's Amando Anto, no. Um, we're, gonna talk, <laughs> we're gonna talk about improving jokes. There's a whole bunch of techniques we have to help you improve jokes there's a lot of reasons why jo do jokes don't get laughs and some of the reasons are pretty pretty in interesting you'll learn the proper way to rewrite any joke so the first thing you gotta identify a joke if it's not a joke it's not a joke and we have a very very concise way for you to define that and to identify it you gotta rewrite concisely you gotta eliminate comics cliches like the one I talked about earlier. That's my time. What a horrible way to tell people good night. That's my time. Exploring the jokes as scenes. A one-liner has all this stuff going on and in your creative mind, you can take that and turn that into a whole scene based on one one-liner joke. And most importantly, we're gonna show you comedy grammar. This is a new kind of grammar because comedy, Stand-up comedy specifically takes some exact grammar, kind of like a haiku takes a specific kind of form. Comedy takes a form too. And we're going to show you how to find that comedy grammar and how to make things pop harder.
Yeah, actually, there's uh, uh, actually six guidelines for writing setups and six guidelines for writing the punches, first part and second part. As he said earlier, jokes have two parts. That's a really important thing for you to understand. Uh, there are two parts. And what makes it a joke is that they're connected in a certain way. OK, and that's what makes a joke. And that's the very specific kind of stuff that I teach. So first is, is it a joke? And then, wow, there's is there a bunch of stuff that you put in there that that slow down the human processing? Uh, people, to get a joke, an audience person, to get a joke, I have laid out and I've noticed 25 different steps their mind goes through. And I've actually seen on MRIs, for a human being to get a joke, it jumps through four different uh, lobes. There's, you know, between the two different hemispheres, jumps around in different parts because you get the setup and you accept it, and then you get that contradiction, figure it out, and then you resolve it. And then if you think it's funny, it laughs. Wow. So if you clutter a joke with the whole these two parts with it, so there's six six guidelines for writing a, a, the first part right and writing the second part right. We can call them setup and punch. That's for one-liners. But when you get into storytelling, the structure's still the same. It's just the presentation is a whole lot different and stuff. So Kev, yeah, keep going. You're doing great. All right. So this is really important, creating strong premises as a through line through your material. A premise is a statement from which to develop a further argument. That's a, a, a dictionary definition right there. If we were to look at a premise from a comedy point of view, in comedy, the premise is the argument is being made with jokes. The jokes are examples of your premise. Uh, give you a good idea about premises. Rodney Dangerfield, the classic premise guy, I get no respect. That's his premise, and almost every joke he says, at least everyone I've seen him do, falls in line under that premise. Uh, Louis C.K., my daughter's an asshole. Same thing. Every, all, each one of his jokes are an example of how his uh, daughter is an asshole. So it's nice to start your routine with a strong premise. Make sure that that's clear with the audience. Chris Rock will say his premise maybe three or four times before he even goes into the bits because he says if the audience doesn't know what you're talking about, they're not going to laugh at the jokes. The premise also states the message and it keeps the routine on track. Gives you a little framework to play around in your routine. It tells the audience what to expect, and very importantly, it establishes the comic voice. That's the voice in your head. It helps you have a strong, established comic voice. Here's Peter K. Peter K has a, his premise. His premise is, uh, until you do sing karaoke, you never know what the word, lyrics are. You're all about karaoke. When you're singing on a karaoke, you haven't got a clue that those were words. And we're singing um, Take That Back for Good. Wash your back, wash your back, wash your back. Want your back? What's this? Want your back? I've been singing Wash Your Back 15 years. So then when you go on a karaoke and you see lyrics, that's what they're supposed to be singing. You know that song, We Are Family? For years I thought they were singing Just Let Me Staple the Vicar. Right? <laughs> who's right and who's wrong here? Listen. All of the people around us, they say, can they be that close? Just let me stay for the vicar. <laughs> That's what they sing. Just let me staple the vicar. What's all that about? Just let me stay for the Okay, so clearly states the premise, and each joke is an example of that premise. And and, and this and bit goes this bit goes on. Uh, he has about seven or eight of the songs he does this with. So this isn't the only. I mean, this goes on for like ten minutes, showing us all the different songs. But he starts yeah. with that premise, and and every 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 bit and that he does after that is an example of this premise. And that's what good stand-up comedians do. They explain it, why well, this is what I'm gonna do, and then they do it. Or was they there, explain what they're gonna do and then contradict themselves too. Is there a news report about a vicar being stable? 
I, th I think there was something about a. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was in the London Times. I read yes. it. Uh, uh, Vicar eight. Stapled uh, still still. Uh, Anyway. I looked for a joke and I didn't find it. Fine. All right. <laughs> so just jump off that cliff. Sometimes you make it. All right, I was trying to it. figure out a place where you would staple a vicar. So. <laughs> well, cool. I got there. Oh, come on. Stop it. There we go. All right. So in our Building a Routine 101 class, you're going to be developing materials. You're going to learn to work with others. When several funny people work together on a show, more jokes are created. If you're doing a show about Michael Jackson, I'm not doing a show about Michael Jackson. If I come up with a joke, it is yours. Everyone has a different perspective and we can help each other. So we help you establish writing groups. We help you with collaborating. We help you with pitching jokes, doing act outs and more. And remember, we, fo we focus all of this in solution feedback we're not going to tell you something just doesn't work we're going to tell you how, what we think you should try all right gala take this what's that says apart you bet uh this is interesting there's a lot of comedy classes out there i know matthew you said you took a comedy class and this one's different than than that one and you know everybody every comedy class is a little different what sets us apart is that we teach techniques we teach only techniques. We don't teach our opinion. And there's a specific reason for that. You know, you can't go around trying to please everyone's opinions. You have to please your own only. That's the best opinion. Um, we, our teachers are certified in breaking system. We have like three or four teachers that teach this techniques, all these techniques on our uh, five week one on one class. We have a proven step-by-step -step technique. Uh, we uh, proven by Anthony Jesselnik, uh, Whoopi Goldberg, Sherry Shepard, uh, Lonnie Lonnie Anders Lonnie on the View. Lonnie Anderson. <laughs> Lonnie had a uh, Lonnie, Lonnie Love. Lonnie, Lonnie Love. My God. So yeah, she's Christina the, Christina Pajitsky. Christina you know yeah, and you know we just saw you know um, the violinist. I forget his name. I have a study Armando. Group. Yeah. Armando. Yeah, he calls me for study group. We still write together on on uh, on Zoom. There's, there's a lot of people using the techniques and the, the techniques we teach get you eventually to be teacher independent in order to work on and fix your own jokes. Uh, we give solution feedback. That's because not criticism. Only reason you would give criticism is if you're coming from a opinion based teaching method. But we can give solutions within techniques that we teach to give fixes for different things that you're trying to get accomplished and trying to express. And we don't have any censorship. Well, we have one censorship except clear and present danger, which is <laughs> akin to you can't yell fire in a movie house, but you can yell movie in a firehouse. Sure. <laughs> it's just so we try to try to make sure that um, we do that. Also, there's another one we use where we don't really help somebody develop comedy from the point of view of the predator of something. You know, it's kind of weird. We'll talk about that. So here we go. Building a routine. This is our this is our five week class. Um, it's simple. Uh, it's joke structure. First night you learn joke structure. Uh, Greg has all kinds of joke structure techniques and they all come together in the end. And you understand they they complement each other. Joke structure, joke writing, how to write jokes based on the joke diagram technique. Um, uh, there's four principles of stand up comedy, four principles. These are like the basic principles that we've identified for comedians. So if you get on stage, you're having trouble, remember the principles and then just go back to that. Premise and ranting. The first night you'll be doing a premise. You'll be uh, finding a premise and ranting out an idea for a show. Uh, you know, we do that in class. Everyone in class does that. It's not open to the public. It's private in the class. And we also give you an assignment, like 10 minutes a day, try to work on your writing uh, for joke writing, work on, work on the writing and the ideas you have. That's a, an assignment we give you each week. You can see it here on the, on the form here, uh, assignment, assignment, assignment. But we also give you another assignment which reflects what we were teaching about, you know, the class one, class two. We give you, we review premise and ranting. You see that red arrow there? Every red arrow means we start with the class with a review of that, of that skill. We review the actual assignment that we gave you and uh, more joke writing. Because sometimes you, it's easier to write for some people. You can write from setup to punch, but some people like from punch to setup. You know, me personally, I go out, I see what's funny. I need to write a setup. So we do teach you a different method of joke writing in, the, in class two. Uh, telling funny stories. A lot of people want to tell funny stories now. So we explain 
uh, you know, how to tell funny stories and what a funny story, how to get to the point of it real quick, not wait till a whole bunch of narrative has happened before you have one joke at the very end, an hour later. <laughs> In the old days, that's how grandma, grandpa told us. We go back to another assignment we'll give you 10 minutes a day, remind you on the writing class three, we start with that review, telling funny stories and we review the assignment. Then we get into jokes and storytelling. Yeah, jokes and storytelling is different than telling funny stories because from jokes and storytelling, it's about presentation. That's when you can get into POVs and act outs and characterizations and vocal change and, you know, uh, bringing someone into, quote, a comedy movie where you create scenes on stage. This is good for you, Victoria, because you're into sketch. You create sketches and scenes on stage where the audience can't turn away from you, even if you're not saying something funny, but you're doing something funny. You're doing something more than the joke, just the words of the joke. That's storytelling. Um, rehearsal process, very important. How you rehearse is how you perform. We have a technique for that and we give you assignment 10 minutes a day, another assignment. Class four is about rehearsal and, do, and performing and writing your routine. Rehearsal, write routine, rehearse routine, perform routine. Yeah, we really help you hone those skills and those techniques. And then class five, we would write the routine again. We give you, we, uh, give you a little bit of lesson on solution feedback based in skill set, based in technique. You guys learn how to talk the language of the, the fundamentals. And uh, then we rehearse your routine and perform it. All this is to get you ready for our 201, which is really good too. Um, that takes you further into your uh, expressing your comic voice. But your, um, if you wanted to take the routine you're working on in class five, right to the open mics, you'll have something right away. You'll have a routine at the end of this class. You can go out in the public and, and perform. So yeah, that's our, that's our five class um, building a routine 101 technique. Um, our, uh, I'm not technique, but our, our curriculum. Okay, so yeah, right now, if you wanted to sign up, you could just let you know for your uh, FYI, now is your time. Turn your dreams into reality. Click on the payment link in chat <laughs> code. There's a code here. Uh, 50 Greg off. Uh, yeah. I'm just that, I'm just glad my name wasn't Jack. Yeah, 50 Jack off. 50 Greg off. <laughs> what? <laughs> so there is it. There it is there. I think it's in chat. Yeah, you can click on that if you want to get, get a seat in this class next week. So yeah, 50 Greg off is the code. And we want to, uh, we're taking $50 off of your tuition. Just to, just to help you with that, because we always offer some kind of benefit for coming to this free presentation. So thanks so much for coming in. Appreciate right. it. Greg I Dean. I, yeah, I'll come back in and talk about some of the things here. Telling funny stories. One-liners, again, are uh, 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 that's the, the comedians that tells you the whole thing just as themselves. Oh, here's, the, here's the first part. Here's the second part. Here's the setup. Here's the punch, as it were. And storytelling is so much more complex because you're using so many more techniques for expressing jokes, okay? Because you're dealing with situations, okay? You're dealing with characters. Sometimes just the character themselves or what the character says is a joke, okay? Or the way they, the, their point of view. It's interesting because you got to get the mindset of the characters, the situation, and then you put a character that doesn't belong in that situation. The comedy comes from that. Doing the act outs, getting the scenes themselves, and then how do you do joke structure in a scene? Because different parts can do the setup or the punch or the first part and second part. You understand? It's not the comedian doing setup and punch. Now it can come from one way place and another place and back and forth, the parts and the tags can, oh, and all that is constructed. Okay. Just like a one-liner. One-liner is a very simple, basic form of it. When you go into storytelling, you have so many more ways of expressing the jokes. And remember, a joke is a single unit of humor. And I don't, it, it, jokes, I have everybody write tight jokes. Everybody's like, you teach us to write one-liners. Yeah, yeah, that's where I teach you first, but then you take those same principles and apply them to storytelling. A, a good joke is always written tight. If you watch people that know what they're did, all the jokes are tight. Doesn't matter if they're telling a story or not. The jokes are well formed, no matter what the medium you know that you put it in. In a cartoon, it's got to be that way. You know, maybe you just got one frame, and it's all got to get in there. 
So storytelling has a lot of, of great technique in it that is just, just takes people's years to get. And a lot of people don't even do uh, act outs or tell stories because it's too complex or too afraid of it. And, you know, with a little bit of training and then they understand the techniques, it becomes fairly easy and a whole lot of fun. I find here's John Mulaney. If you haven't seen him, uh, it just kind of notice he does a lot. He does a lot of uh, mime work. He act out. He has a, the, the alert girl with a strap, it, even though he never mentions it. She's always got to she, he's grab. He's, she's holding on the strap of her her purse. Uh, you know, she speaks, not really speaks, but she reacts. He does her. He does himself, et cetera. Let's look at this story and then we'll talk about it a little bit more. But you can see more tools than just standing there saying a one-liner when you start to really look at it. Here we go, John. I'm changing between subway trains, right? And it's two o'clock in the morning, okay? And you have to walk down this long corridor in order to change trains. Two o'clock in the morning, it's just me and this woman. And she's walking a few yards ahead of me and we're walking down and she starts giving me like the over the shoulder, like that, you know, like looking. And then she starts to pick up the pace. She starts to walk a lot faster. So I think, oh, she must hear the train coming. You know, or she feels it in her feet like a Native American in a movie. So I start to sprint down the hallway at her and she looks back and she's like, ah! And then she gives chase, so now we're like booking it down the corridor at two o'clock in the morning, and I'm gaining on her. I'm gaining on her, and we're getting to the end of the hallway, and she's going into that like dead end shuffle, you know, that women do when you chase them. And I'm almost there. I'm almost at her, and then it dawns on me oh, she's running from me. Because in her eyes, I'm an adult. <laughs> and adults rape each other. Right. It's very funny. I mean, I really enjoy him. He's a lot. And notice he's running. He's, you know, playing her. Ah! And, all, you know, he's playing her. He doesn't just tell us she yells. He becomes her. That's a very different uh, uh, presentation to the joke. And again, uh, it, 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 you know, it's the presentation. There's more, more, much more complex tools for the presentation. Also, the joke about, you know, in her eyes, I'm an adult. That's a joke on his character of him looking so young. What is he, 35, and he looks 12, right? That's a joke on him on how on he looks so young. She sees me as an adult. Wow. Oh, that's so. Yeah. So. One of the things that you, a lot of, one of the misnomers is, oh, you've got to come in with our classes or whatever, and you, you, you have to have a routine or whatever, or even in our advanced class. You, have, you know, this has developed over time, and that's what we're part of what we're here to teach you. We're going to teach you how to fill routines with jokes. There are dozens of spaces just begging for a joke in a show. You start with a story. OK, and there's dozens of techniques that, that you can do uh, to to uh, fill it in. I mean, and I, they're documented. I teach them. That's the whole interesting thing about it is I actually teach these things to you. Different ways of doing it. Like I said about, oh, it's his character. That's one way of doing it, playing her and acting her out. He, he's so let's look at this story as a story. The story is he's late at night at the subway. He sees a woman ahead of her. She walks faster. Okay. He walks faster to the point where they're running. And then he realized she's running from him. That's the story. <laughs> That's probably where it all began. Everything else is him as a writer and as a comedian filling in the jokes to make it into an entire routine. So again, things aren't written necessarily, they're developed over time. You fill joke, and the more you perform it, the more you fill in the jokes. So, you know, I just wanted that to, to, to you to understand. So over here on the right, I'm gonna play this again. Over here on, the, on my right, maybe whatever decided it is for you, is a little blue graphic that's gonna come in and show you 
every place I believe he's added a joke from the initial story the, of the real event of him just, you know, walking faster and this whole thing. Just the basic story. Here you go. I'm changing between subway trains, right? And it's 2 o'clock in the morning, okay? And you have to walk down this long corridor in order to change trains. 2 o'clock in the morning, it's just me and this woman. And she's walking a few yards ahead of me. And we're walking down. And she starts giving me, like, the over the shoulder. Like that, you know? Like, look at me. And then she starts to pick up the pace. She starts to walk a lot faster. So I think, oh, she must hear the train coming. You know, or she feels it in her feet, like a Native American in a movie. So I start to sprint down the hallway at her, and she looks back and she's like, ah! And then she gives chase, so now we're like booking it down the corridor at two o'clock in the morning, and I'm gaining on her. I'm gaining on her, and we're getting to the end of the hallway, and she's going into that like dead end shuffle, you know, that women do when you chase them. And I'm almost there. I'm almost at her, and then it dawns on me. Oh, she's running from me. Because in her eyes, I'm an adult. And adults rape each other. Yeah, a good, you know, seven, eight, nine of those laughs in the story, I think, were uh, uh, developed and put into this basic story. Because to me, there's only one really, maybe one or two good laughs that actually come from the original story itself. And you need to know that. And, and that that's what we teach. We teach you how to do this. Okay? You don't have to start with the perfect routine. You come in with an idea. Oh, I want to talk about this. Oh, it's a premise and then you rant. Or here's a story I want to tell. And so we help you develop it into a routine. That's, that's part of the training is to understand that. And what are the techniques behind it? We can actually teach you the actual techniques that help you do that. All right, so uh, organizing routines, uh, jokes into routines. You get a whole bunch of jokes from a lot of bunch of things, or you write my system and you have a whole bunch of jokes on the same premise or the same topic. How do you organize them? And I say you need to know your BCAs, okay? So what you do is you B material you open with, C material you put in the middle, and the A material you end with. Now, this is a technique we teach. And we use it a lot when somebody, we get closer to somebody doing their show. Oh, what's your A, B? And sometimes you're guessing at it, but that's okay. At least now you're using the technique. And then after you see a show, you might adjust it. I'm not sure. So that's what you do with a routine, but it's also what you do with a show. You put your B routine and bits at the beginning, your C material and in, and you close with your A material because the audience remembers, remembers you by how you ended. So even if you start a little slow, they'll remember you being absolutely hilarious because the last part, you were kick-ass. You crushed it. Oh, it took them a minute to get going, but uh, hey, you know, uh, you know, they, they killed at the end, and that's all that the audience cares about. So here's a real good example of this is the kind of stuff we teach you. It's not philosophy. It's not you know, it's very practical things that you can practice and learn and, and get better at and apply easily. This is a technique in itself. The next line, next one, sp managing stage fright. Huge. Uh, you, you know, you, you don't want the butterflies to go away. You want them to fly in formation. <laughs> you want to be able to, you want to take that energy and use it for the show instead of it, it, it pounding on you and keeping you from doing a show. And, and uh, from my research, actually, I have a friend of mine who's a PhD and, and a full professor at a university of California, uh, wrote a book called No More Butterflies, and he did it out of research, did a great deal of research. This isn't just Greg's opinion or somebody. This is the guy who did research on it, and he found fear of the unknown was one of the biggest factors that caused people to have stage fright and, and not do stuff. Fear of the unknown, Okay really important to know this. Oh, it's fear of the unknown. So what do we do in class? We design a class where we repeat different things in class, you know, getting up and working on your show, performing, rehearsing, doing things, doing exercises in class so that it's, you know, for you two, it's not so much. 
uh, because you've had some experience. Oh, I know what that is then. A lot of people don't when they start these classes. So the, this, the class is designed to move you through that. Now, this is the next one, which is feeling unprepared, probably even more so. When people feel unprepared, they're terrified. All right. So this whole class, this whole five-week class is designed to do just exactly that, to get you prepared. And, and not only do we teach you the techniques and you do them in class, and then as it goes along, you start applying them. Then when you finally get, and we work you toward, and we'll be honest with you, about a one-minute show. Okay, but that one minute show is so well put together. Not only is it well put together, you know how it got put together and you know where your jokes and your tags are. If you watch my students, they pause naturally for their laughs because they did this process with us. Right, and they know, oh, that's exactly where I'm going to get a laugh. And then they practice pausing and staying present to notice what's going on with the audience and then go on to their next tag or joke or start another story, whatever it is. But they know they, they, it, 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 the important part here is to know how it got made, not that just you have it. I think you were talking about that, Matt, right? Was, oh, I've got it. I don't really know how it was made. The teacher kind of did it and did this and that and so on. Uh, yeah, that happens a lot. A lot of teachers do it because they don't even know how they do it. To teach something, to really teach something, you got to know how you do what you do before you can teach it to somebody else. Okay. And that's what I'm, that's why the, 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 the people that are certified to teach have stayed with me for at least a year because they had to learn how they do what they do and then go, oh my God. And once they get that, then they follow the structures and, and the techniques and the explanations and definitions. They kind of go, oh, now I know how to help somebody else do that same thing. They can do it. <laughs> it's different to be, you know, I think Robin Williams would have been the worst teacher in the world. I knew Robin really well. I go way back to San Francisco and the Holy City Zoo, a little crappy little hole in the wall open mic that uh, Kevin Pollack and Dana Carvey and uh, Bobby Slate and Paula Poundstone and all the other San Francisco people came out of. We were all there at that same time and stuff. So, uh, yeah, uh, you know, Robin, Robin didn't know how he did what he did. You know, ask him on a, uh, inside the actor's studio, how do you, how do you write material? And got up and got a scarf and improvised the whole bit. That was hilarious. That's how he, he, he doesn't know how he writes the jokes. He just gets up and behaves and uh, then notices those jokes and keeps them. He's got a great mind. Hey, but Grant. he couldn't teach anybody else how to do because he didn't know how he did what he did. He only knew how to do it, but he didn't want to be a teacher. Why would he? I mean, you know, he's, he's, he's one of the biggest stars in the world, so he would just do what he did. Yes, Kayla. Hey, Greg, I just want to take a second to welcome uh, Victoria and iPhone here and uh, Kyle. Guys, thanks so much for coming. Uh, this is Greg Dean's Comedy Workshop. We're talking about building a comedy routine uh, with the fundamentals and with the skills and techniques uh, that are available in Greg Dean's book, Step by Step to Stand Up. Um, you come in at a good time. We still have a lot more to cover. So if you have any questions a bit, or a bit more, yes, I yep. want to uh, talk, uh, give us some idea of your, uh, your goals and things like that. Just put them in chat and we can, we can, uh, we can talk about that or meet up with you. We're going to take questions at the end as well. We only have a maybe 20 minutes to go or something like that, but thanks for coming. just want to say that. So once you kind of deal with the uh, feeling on un the unknown and feeling pr very prepared, it gives you really easy, gives you courage to get on stage, you know, and without drinking. So that's <laughs> courage comes in many forms. So uh, this is Alex DeStefano. It's just a guy, you know, he, he's he, just a guy. He came in and said, I got, idea. Uh, he'll tell you, you'll see, but he had never performed before. Didn't know anything about stand-up, had never been in front of people, never wrote a joke in his life, uh, thought he had some funny ideas, but was scared, okay? And then just going through the 101 class, this was his uh, performance of, of his show after just one, one, one 101 class is what it was. So I'll let him kind of deal with it. Well, I think I got... A lot of good material in my head that 
I could write with, but uh, I just got to get over a little bit of stage fright. Yeah, Alex! All right, thanks everybody for supporting Virtual Comedy. It's my first time doing this. Uh, you know, this all feels like a dream to me, but I think that's because I ate and ate the mushrooms before the show. <laughs> you know, I might start to see trails, so just forgive me. Be with me. <laughs> uh, I just went uh, camping on a six-week camping vacation, living in a tent for six weeks. I was homeless in Skid Row. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I had a mental health incident. I had to move back in with my parents. <laughs> it's okay, though. You know, it's not a bad thing. My mom's a good cook. Problem is, she cooks crystal meth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my dad always said I was a good. My ass was good for nothing, so I started smuggling heroin in my anus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got my unemployment. Oh, fuck! I just fucked up. I think it's because oh. I smoked too much weed. <laughs> 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 I just got a pay raise. Yeah, I got my unemployment check. <laughs> <laughs> I went to a gender reveal party. They called the cops to me because I was the only one to reveal my gender. <laughs> yeah, that's quite a journey to come from standing here going, I have no idea what to do. And, uh, you know, he, he, you know, started right at the top he did what he wanted to do he wanted to talk about his father about his homelessness about some other things etc etc and he wrote jokes about those things i mean this is partly it's based on his life and of course he exaggerated and add more punchlines to it but it, it's all stuff that was in his life and uh, that's what he talked about and he learned and he didn't this is this didn't come out this i i think this is excellent you know he's going from joke to joke to joke uh, very clearly, and knows where his jokes are, holding for his laughs. That's the hardest thing to teach beginners, is to, to notice when the audience is laughing and pause and be present while they're laughing. Notice he's listening to us laugh, even on Zoom, and then picks it back up at the right time, etc. That's pretty remarkable for a first-timer. Actually, pretty extraordinary for a first-timer. And this, this isn't unusual. This is not, this is kind of, this is what my students do. I mean, he ended up being a really particularly good joke writer, but a lot of his behaviors and stuff are, are, are what everybody does. And he screwed up and he didn't blame you. He didn't get mad. He didn't, you know, he just handled it, came back, made it work again. Okay. So and that's part of what we're teaching them is be present, have fun with it, play around, make jokes about it, et cetera. And he did all those things. And that's just after a 101 class from zip zero, nothing to a guy who's getting up and I think that was what 45 seconds less than a minute at what six seven laughs in that period of time yeah. uh yeah for you know, people are gonna have a hard time believing he had been doing stand-up for just you know a little over a month <laughs> so that's Alex uh so uh, this thing just doesn't click and move on performing with confidence of course that's what you want we all want that but there is a secret to that Confidence is earned. It's not a gift. Okay. People sit around and go, oh, you know, they say to me all the time, oh, no, no, it's okay. I'll do stand up when I get some confidence. They'll never do stand up because you don't get confidence You're sitting around waiting for it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't happen. It comes from doing things and doing them wrong and doing them right until you get them right. And then you go, oh, I or get into troubling situations and get out of them again. And you go, oh, I can handle this. I can do this. Like Tom Jonitis earlier said, oh, you taught me that I can do it. I can do this. Well, that's a huge thing. Yeah. And part of it is getting past the unknown and feeling prepared. Okay, the, the, the design of the 101 class is to get you prepared. Okay, yeah, it's a one minute show, but if you can do one minute, you can do two, you can do three, you can do five, you can do 15, you've got the process down. And then you get in the advanced classes and now we teach you and work with you on collaborating. You can develop material at an extraordinary rate, a lot faster than any other comedian uh, at this level. I mean, you know, Louis C.K. and some of the greats can do that, okay, but very few people, and most of them also have writers. They don't know that. Your top comedians, a lot of them, including Robin Williams, had writers. 
that helped them because they were rich. They could hire those people. You're not at that place. But when you have that information, you can do it. And then you know how it got done. And you can, and then, then that gives you the confidence. I know where the jokes are. I know how I built them. Now I go out and have fun with the audience. So how do you get this confidence? Complete the assignments, 10 minutes a day. Give us an hour a week, okay? That's what we're asking. Use the feedback from the teachers. Oh, it's frustrating for us. We give people the perfect fix. We explain it to them. We show it to them. We help them with it. We rewrite the joke. And then the next week, they bring back in the badly written bit or joke again. It's like, okay, like we said last week, you know, and that's frustrating. But if you do, if you take the feedback and you implement it, you're going to grow really fast. And you're going to know why. Again, that's really helpful to understand. Oh, now I can see why that joke works so much better. And then on next time you're writing a joke, you can use those techniques. Prepare your in-class performances. There's only, there's a couple of them. And I don't even really consider them performances. I really consider them practicing. You're not just gonna get up and do a one-shot performance. Uh, you're going to get up and do your show and then I'm going to give you some or somebody will give you some feedback about, uh, you know, ways to improve it or something like that or some of the things we're teaching you and you do it again and we'll help you and then you do it again and then we help you and you do it again. Uh, it's not a it, it's a practice performance. It's not a, a one shot deal like really going to a nightclub where, oh, whoa, that, I got my shot in this class. It's not like that. You do the performance over and over and over again and you get better at it. And we start showing you, oh, you know, when you do it that way, you start show actually starts getting shorter and quicker and better performed. And there's a lot of other things you'll be implementing in that. Attend our, our weekly office hours. So I think we have office hours once a week now is that what it is twice a week what is it twice a week right now twice a week on twice Tuesdays a week. And yes and you'll get information about that if you sign up for the class because it requires being in the class but any questions you have it's about the industry it's about your assignment it's about what if you have you know the jokes you're writing if anything it's office hours come in and talk with us we're giving you unprecedented access to us and, and, and to, to work on what you need. Do our open mics. We do one open mic a week now. We're switching to one starting next yeah, week. Next week. One, and it's at 11 a.m. Uh, uh, Pacific time. 12 so, p.m. Pacific time on what Tuesday. was it? 12 p.m. Pacific time, Tuesdays. But Okay, great. Then that's what it is. They can come and watch so, the open mic too. Or you can come and watch it. Watch it. It's a lot of Kev's the MC and he makes it a whole lot of fun and safe. No one's going to, you know, a real open mic, somebody might trash you and, you know, like trying to be funny and stuff and doing that stuff. It's not going to happen with us. We're here to be supportive and helpful and get you have a have a good day. You know, like I say, stand up comedy's hard enough, knocks people off the path. You don't need the teachers to be the problem. The teachers need to be the solutions and the support system. And then it's still, it's not an easy path in itself. And it's all about building that routine with five plus laughs per, per minute. That's a professional level. Alex, you know, that you just said, that's a professional level show. He's working at five plus laughs per minute, pausing for his laughs. We didn't write those jokes. He wrote them. We helped him improve them. Don't get me wrong. He rewrote those things probably seven, eight, nine, ten times, maybe more a piece until he got, we they got to right where they rhythmed and they in and so on and so forth. I mean, it was not an easy process for him to do that. That took him weeks and weeks and weeks of work. Uh, and he was lazy. <laughs> he put in 10 minutes a day. <laughs> He was like, I only put in 10 minutes a day. I did, I did what you told me to do. I didn't put in a lot more. He just did what we asked him to do. And that's what kind of results that you can get from this. And that's a, a you know, a, a really good shot. People are not going to believe he's doing stand up for, you know, a little over a month. Hard to believe. Anyway, so uh, just wanted to say all that. So then I turned this back over to Gayla. Uh, to moi, to moi, to moi, to moi. I'm sorry, I'm not French. I'm eubonic. Okay, here we go. We start next week. Uh, we want to invite you uh, and your family. <laughs> Join us. Um, we start next week, next Thursday, July 1st. That's kind of fun. Um, yeah, 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. This is Eastern time. Or is that okay? 
Uh, five weeks. Um, so you saw the five week calendar, of what we do in each week. And we do a little more than that because, you know, we, we, we're trying to abbreviate the presentation as much as possible. But we have um, more to offer there in those classes. You'll see limited to whatever that number is, 15. Sometimes we go 12 and we'll cut it off. Sometimes 10. Depends. It depends. But 15 is like a maximum. We have five to seven left. I'm not sure if that's the real number, but uh, people are signing up. So we have some seats left. So we'd love you to join us. Uh, if you have questions, uh, we have two ways to make a payment for this class in terms of your tuition. I wish you, I wish your class was free as this free seminar, but um, yeah, we, we unfortunately we, it, is, it is a service we provide and we have more than the class to offer. We have a community, I'll get to that. So tonight, this is our cost, our 399 payment. That is something that's been in business. That's been our payment for 20 years. That's, that was our that was our cost for the class uh, back before COVID, and we still gave a fifty a fifty percent I'm sorry fifty dollar discount. Fifty percent would be cool too, and a fifty dollar discount. So there's your code fifty Jack Greg off fifty I'm sorry fifty Greg off. <laughs> Why'd you put Jack in my head, Greg? Jeez. So it's because it's 50, funny. <laughs> fifty Jack Greg. Somebody's gonna put Jack Greg off. 50 Jack Greg off. I'm sorry, 50 Greg off. So that makes your rate only 349. 349. That gives you all kinds of stuff and we'll explain what you're getting. Um, or if you need a payment plan, there's 399 at 99.75 a week for four weeks. You know what that is as an automatic debit and yikes, some people get afraid of that. So anyways, but it gives you more time to pay so you can pay the full rate, but it's, you know, not all at once. So we do give you those offers as well. So somebody asked for that. Now we include that in mm -hmm. our, in our, in our system. So we, like I said, we have a lot of stuff other than just the class. I mean, you're coming here for immersing yourself in the, in with a team that knows how to help you articulate that comic voice in your head. So here's how we do it. We give you free PDF assignments for assignments. PDF handouts that comes strictly uh, strictly from Greg Dean because uh, he's changing the curriculum and fine tuning it and customizing it per class and so sometimes the handouts change and we customize them and give them to you on on a on our platform Slack if you're familiar with Slack we love Slack Zoom support and training not everybody really knows how to do Zoom support even though it's been a year. Uh, we're all been very resistant to that, but now, you know, yeah, we'll help you with that and tell you what technique, uh, what kind of technology you need to, to do better on Zoom, because I think Zoom is here to stick around for a while. Plus, we do uh, showcases on Zoom still, some, some, you know, makeup or review classes on video. See, one of the good things about Zoom is we can record the class you just took. So, if we can record the class you just took, then you can review the class you just took. <laughs> you have like seven days to review the tape because it goes by so fast. It's like, oh my God, what did he say? What did he say? And so you can watch it, you know, um, you know, or listen to it while you're doing something else, you know, on the review. We'll give you a seven day um, time frame for that because then we have to archive it to make room for the next class and the next recording. Office hours for help on assignments. That is one of us on Zoom for one hour each week each day of the week to sit there and wait for you to show up. You might have a question or you might need help on your assignment or you want us to re-explain something or maybe you just wanna talk about your life. <laughs> People do that too. You know, they get on and go, I just wanna find out like how to get booked in clubs and how do you get an agent? We talk about that too. It, it's, a sh it's a shop talk kind of session for whoever wants to come in for that hour. We have a different teacher that comes on Zoom one hour every day, Tuesday through Thursday, to wait for somebody to show up. Here we go, direct messaging the teachers and students, we have that, kind of like in real time, you can talk to us. Like, you know what real time is, is like texting, that's like real time. So you can text somebody and then they'll text right back, that's real time. Same thing with messaging from Facebook. Well, we use that platform, uh, another platform to do that. And in real time, we can talk, give you some tips or talk to you about what's going on. Membership in our global community. Uh, that's what we have on Slack. It's really great. Um, we have shows going on. We need comics. We book people out of the class to do shows. We tell you all about Clubhouse and all kind of other stuff we're doing. And the open mics as well. Greg mentioned that earlier. So there. 
class includes. There's more that it includes, but we only have like five more minutes before you guys are like falling asleep. We, we, we get it, we, we get it. Stick around, here we go. Guess what? We're at the end. We're gonna stick around. We're gonna talk to you. Greg's gonna answer questions, talk up, unmute yourself, let's chat. After all, it is stand-up comedy. There's the payment link again in chat. There's the code. Get in the class. We're all comics here. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the stage, Mr. Greg Dean. Yeah. Thank you for that tepid round of applause. So there. <laughs> yeah, no, so thank that's you. That's the way it is, you know? So, Denise, good to see you again. Hey, well, Denise. Yeah, you know, there it is. So good. All right. Well, uh, was there anything that came in black? Oh, say that again. Say that again. You got cut off the. Who was that? I did. No, uh, not you. In... Okay. Kyle, who was that? Somebody was talking. So, Kev, anything on? Good Slack? to see you again. I'm actually excited. Very. You're under you're underwater, Denise. Uh, get get yeah, out of the car and uh, and go to the surface. I'm glad you're excited because stand up comedy is exciting and and being able to just speak your mind on comedy. That's what comics do. They speak their mind. They complain. So like getting over stage fright, Greg. There was a question about like you know what if you get on stage and and people react badly. How do you deal with things like that? Uh, remain playful. <laughs> yeah. And, and admit it going, whoa, okay, this is not working at all. It was funny when I told it to my dog. <laughs> <laughs> that was funnier in my head at home than it was here. You have fun with it. You, you use that as your material uh, because then, see, w when, when jokes aren't working, you can call it bombing or whatever you want to call it. Okay. And jokes aren't working. Think about when you're watching a comedian like that. You feel bad, don't you? You feel bad for the comedian. And the audience then wants the comedians to get off stage so they can stop feeling bad. <laughs> they don't care that the jokes are working or not. They just want to stop feeling bad for you. But if you're handling it with play and going, it's okay, 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 I'll get you. I promise you, don't blame them. I'll get you. <clears throat> Let me try this and try this. Okay, okay, okay. You, and you keep playing. All right, that didn't work too. Okay, okay. I said, you know, I'm, I'm, you, but I'm here doing my best. I'm really committed. Okay. Now, and you remain playful. They don't feel bad for you. Yeah. So they don't want you to get off stage. Now you can't do that for an hour, but for when you're starting and shorter shows, you can, cause I've taught tons of people to do it. And a lot of times just calling it that it's not working gets a big laugh and it kind of resets the room. And then you have a chance to start again. Okay. And you know, here's the other thing about my students. We can't guarantee that the audience is going to laugh. That's just never happening. Okay. We don't know. All right. What I can guarantee you, if you do what it is I teach you, what you're going to take on stage are jokes. That's huge. I got to open mics. Go, that's not a joke. It's not a joke. Not a joke. Not a joke. Oh, that's a joke. And they get a laugh. They don't know what a joke is. I'm serious. That's why earlier we said, oh, if you know joke structure, you know what, what you know, you know where a joke is, what a joke is, identify it. Fix them, write jokes at will, identifying a joke. Oh, is it a joke? Okay, that's the first step. Is it a joke? Because jokes are, they're, they really are a, 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 a kind of a very specialized form of communication when you get to know them. And there's, there's maybe billions of ways of, get, of expressing that humor, but at the center, a joke is a joke. There are certain requirements that make it a joke. So those requirements have to be there. And this isn't Greg's rules. I, I didn't invent this, I recognized it. And then I, it was ratified by the World, uh, World Humor Conference, the International Society of Humor Studies, which is 5,000 PhDs all over the world who do nothing but study humor and me. I get, they invite me to their conferences because I can teach them how to write a joke in five minutes and it freaks them out. Okay, because my model, and they go, yes, you're right. Your model is uh, the representation of what a joke is. That's what a joke is. They have different language and different approach because I developed mine separately. 
And mine had to work or people don't pay me. Them, they, they're, they're part of a university. They just do, you know, comic, comedy theory for comedy theory and build on somebody else's work for their, you know, prestige. It doesn't have to be useful. It just has to be real and, and documentable for them. So they looked at my work and went, yep, that's a joke. You're right. Okay, so when I teach it to people, first thing you need to do is go, that's a joke. So the chances are far less that the audience isn't going to laugh. And then we teach you, I always say, if you're, play, if you're present and you're playful, you win. Yeah, your show may or may not be funny, but you always leave the stage with your dignity because you had fun, had a good time. The audience had a good time. Okay, get up and do it again. Work on your show. So there's many things to do. And again, that's learning stuff. What's missing for most beginner comedians is not learning fundamental skills. You know, with the, everybody knows to do it for sports. Everybody needs to know to do it for a lot of the arts and music, especially, or dance, or if you want to be a ballet dancer, you, you know, uh, <laughs> Learn the fundamentals for stand-up. Yes, Gail, go. So, you know, Matthew Matthew has a question about earlier. He was talking about he wants to develop comedy from his own ear, from his oh, own, good. you know, um, his yeah. own sense of humor. He can't, you know, go back and always ask a teacher about what they or how to give feedback. He just wants to do it on his own. And right. And that's what we're setting you up for is yeah. that when you learn these things and then as we improve your shows, say, here's a fix. This is the technique we're using. Okay. Yeah. Uh, here's one of the guidelines for writing a proper punch. Okay. Okay. You wrote it this way. Now we're saying, try it this way, try it with, you know, this and that, and there's reasons. And for me, uh, since for an audience to get a joke, there's 25 steps, mental steps they have to go through. Most of the, 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 uh, the uh, guidelines that I give are to prevent, uh, to make the mental processing happen quickly, easily, and instantaneous. People fill jokes with a lot of bullshit. And it's slow. The audience has to sift through all that information in order to be able to react to it. And after they do that, they usually what they do is go, oh, huh. Hmm. Oh, that was clever. Rather than laugh. I don't want them. That's not the reaction I want. I want them to laugh so hard their forehead bangs on the table. That's what I'm looking for every time. And to do it with, with a lot of tags and pump up those jokes so you get an audience on a roll. That's my favorite. That was always my favorite thing. The tags and the tags and the tags and the tag. Wind those up into something. That's a whole lot of fun. Was, it takes a long time to learn it and a lot of performing. Yes. I was wondering if uh, Victoria, if you wanted to ask, I know that you, you write sketches or you used to doing sketches. Do you, uh, I'm curious about how you would take a sketch and make that comedy or take the comedy into sketch in terms of like, writing the idea or what would be your question about about how to use your sketch writing skills in stand-up do you have a you know i'm just thinking you might have some inquiry about that no i think this has been really self-explanatory like really you know self-explanatory i just think it's so cool this because um i, I really love in particular going this whole serialistic uh time for everybody it's like just being able to speak my mind like you said using sketch too but also acting because it's a story and i write stories so then i just like that idea and i have stories all the time and i think it'd be very <laughs> hard to just put my mind somewhere and the only real the, uh, it's a big difference but the central difference between sketch writing and stand-up and storytelling is you do everything <laughs> <laughs> you play all the fucking parts of that sketch. It's still a sketch. It has the same properties as a sketch, right? It's just that you're playing all the parts. That's what stand up. It's you. You're standing there doing, okay, this guy's blah, blah, blah. And then you lay out these conversations and put the situations in there, et cetera, et cetera. It's the same thing as doing sketches. They usually have a tendency to be shorter for stand up, but the structure is the same, okay? <laughs> It's, oh, sorry. That's, that was it. Yeah, go ahead. No, what's your comment? I was going to say it's much easier to schedule because I'm always with myself. Yes, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, you don't, you, that's a great thing about it. And, and first of all, for me, you don't do stand up alone. The audience is part of the process. 
Yeah, she said the normally she, I'm sorry, Greg, normally she has a troupe she has to schedule the sketch rehearsal with, you know, in I order to, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Yeah, of course you do. So yeah, I'm saying is that, that yeah, it's you and the audience. The audience will, also you can use your improv skills with with uh, one of the thing I, I taught it uh, uh, improv or stand up. Not nobody, not enough people showed up for it and stuff because I I just don't think they got how cool it was. But we did. Uh, I used to do this too. Uh, actually, I, at the Westwood Comedy Store where you could really experiment. I used to do. If you know much about improv, I used to do one man freeze tags. Oh, that's funny have a pick one person and say, Hey, don't fuck with me and go freeze, 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 freeze. But after I make a joke, say freeze and let the body put it. Then I'd look at the body position. I'd start a whole nother scene. It was just me. That's great. Nobody I know don't know anybody else who has ever done that. And it killed. I would get just as good a laughs with it as a group gets with freeze tags because I got, you know, did it a lot. Uh, forgetful storyteller is another good one, right? You, you know, you get to a point, you know, you know, it was, anyway, the, it, 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 you have the sketch background and storytelling. See, now we're going to show you how to one, keep it tight because storytelling, you add other things for other reasons for effects. Okay. Stand up is you strip out everything that doesn't serve the jokes. And that's the difference. Stand up is a different animal for that reason. Is that you, you're trying to pile in that five, six, seven, eight laughs per minute because the audience is judging you every 15 seconds. And if you go 45 seconds or a minute without a laugh, man, that's a long time in stand up. Whereas if you do some kind of comedy and corporate work, if you're funny once every three to five minutes, you're a god or a goddess of comedy, right? That's how, it's the context room, but stand up requires the, 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 the competition so high, you gotta be as fun, you try to be as funny as Bill Burr, right? Uh, 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 Rachel Feinstein, you know, to get in there and, and watch her. She does storytelling, I love her work, she's great. You know, if you don't know her, watch her. She does great characters and she, she stages them the way I would teach her to stage them. A simple, right to the point. I don't know if she read my book or, or she, it was natural for her, but I, I watched her work and I went, I, I, don't, I don't, you know, a lot of comedians, I have things I think they can do more effectively. They're, they're incredibly funny. Don't get me wrong. Their talent is extraordinary. I mean, they're professional stuff, but some things I look at them, I, I could, I could tighten that up. I could, there's a few things I could make them more efficient or probably work a little bit better from, a, you know, but they're overall, they're so good that they, you know, why would they? It's little things that I would help them, you know, clean up and stuff. So uh, yeah. So watch, watch Rachel Feinstein. You'll see what I mean by that, that she crafts her shows really, really well. So uh, anything else? Do you have any one-on-ones in, in person coming up? Uh, that's not my job to answer such things. My job is to uh, to take care of you and to teach. So I'm going to take off if there's no more questions. I'm going to leave you with Kevin and Gala to answer any other questions. Yes, Gala? I can't hear you. You're muted. muted. Bye, Greg. I had nothing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, great. No other questions on yeah, stuff like that. Thanks for showing up. I really appreciate it. Enjoyed meeting you guys. I hope to see you in the class and uh you know or see you sometime in the future and see your shows okay well, thanks thank you Bye -bye. follow us on all the uh, steve what are the social networking sites we we have people follow us on we have uh, instagram facebook twitter linkedin uh twitch all that clubhouse stuff. clubhouse yeah it's clubhouse. all called greg dean comedy yeah is that then you can get is that what it's called i don't know that's the handle right yeah greg dean stand up uh, they're a little different, but you can find oh. them. It's really, really easy to find them online. So, can stand up. Okay, cool. Yeah. Yes, we have a one-on-one -on -one class that you can. But the thing is, it just started, and but it's in LA. It's in LA and Santa Monica. I'll come out. Oh, it starts on next next uh, Monday. Next well, Monday, because there was just a free intro this week, so it actually well, it started this week. I thought. No, it was a free intro this week. It starts next week. Right, you'll come Monday. out. I don't, I, I don't know if I can come up for this one. I was like, I don't know, but I've been trying to figure maybe. I have a lot of friends out there. I used to live there. Oh, that's really cool. Well, the thing is, uh, if you came out and did that, you you need to somehow come out every week because uh, it's five. Oh, I, need to come out. 
Yeah, and I don't, I don't have a jet yet. The, um, <laughs> what's the you don't have a jet? Okay. I know, but like at this point in my life, this age, yes, I know it's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> but when uh, when's the one after this one? Like September, late August? I think it's, so. We're on a six week cycle. We do the free intro and then a five week of classes and then a free uh, webinar and then five more classes. But here's so the every six story. weeks. I would certainly recommend you do, you take the 101 fundamental course, this course, get it done, understand it, work with us, get your stuff written, get a, get a minute worked out, you know, get on the community. And when you spend the time and money to come out to LA, you can shift into our 201 class, which is our advanced class. And you'll be coming out to do a, a comedy showcase at the, at the improv with us. That'd be fun. It's kind of a better way to spend your money in the sense of you'll be um, uh, at the end of the class and you would have met a whole bunch of LA people and you would have been connecting and networking. And then you're gonna do a comedy improv showcase and you'll have a video of having performed at the improv. So I think that maybe if you, yeah. <laughs> you mean you're recommending to take the, uh, the Zoom one? Yeah, to get the fundamentals done. That way, that way is more rewarding to come put a show together in LA, in Hollywood, with us in Hollywood. Yeah, either way. Otherwise, if you put it off and you're waiting to the next session just to get the one-on-one level done, then, you know, that's okay too. But I'm trying to move you ahead so that by the time you're ready to come out to LA, you're already doing the 201. You're in the 201 with us. That's and we're very teaching. That makes sense. Kind of makes sense. I mean, Matthew thinks so. I mean, because I saw him like, hmm, yeah, yeah. improv. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do it together. <laughs> yeah, I thought you two were like a, a team because uh, you came on together, you stayed together. Uh, this is, yeah, you're in Hawaii, you're in uh, New York, Matthew's in Wisconsin. How far is that from each other? You neighbors or what's going on there? I don't know. Not too much. Not too much, no. <laughs> I'm near the Mississippi. She's near the uh, Atlantic, if I've got geography right. Um, but so, but it was a great class. I mean, I just had a, a quick question about the the premise is different from the setup, right? Or is the premise just another way of saying the setup, right? Or, or yeah, it you? is very much so. Some people use their premise as a setup, but but a lot of comics use it as setting up the context of their routine. It's kind of like what. Kevin talked about with Rodney Dangerfield, I get no respect, you don't respect. But you'll find that all of his jokes don't use the words, I get no respect. He'll say the premise, I get no respect. And then the joke is separate from it. Like, um, I get no respect. I saw a girl in an elevator. I saw a sexy lady and I dropped my pants and then she dropped her price. Um, yeah. So his setup was, I saw a sexy lady and I'm not quoting an exact. Mm -hmm. He has another joke, I get no respect. I've been having trouble with my wife lately. And I, I asked her, is there someone else? She said, there must be. <laughs> That's one of his jokes, but his setup is, I've been having trouble with my wife. It's, his setup wasn't the premise. The premise is I get no respect, so. Oh, okay. So it's like just a short little phrase that establishes yeah. like some feeling or emotion or, or, or just context. It's a short person. little phrase that keeps it in, in, in it kind of gives the, the uh, the, the bookends, as you will. So the audience knows what you're going to talk about. But you mm -hmm. don't even have to keep repeating it. That was just his style, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, but you, you can repeat it if you want to, right? Sure you can. Sure okay. you can. It keeps you from trailing off into other things. And um, it keeps the audience focuses on hearing more about that idea. And there's a lot of benefits to keeping it as well. But repeating yeah. It, 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 yeah. So it's up to you. It, it is a style. And a lot of people do it. Kevin, Kevin, who does it? Who does it? Chris Rock does it a lot too. He and he'll he'll say the premise like three or four times before he even does his first joke because he just wants to be incredibly clear of what his point of view on that subject is. Yeah, mm. I, I watched him perform. He has one joke where he says, "Women will not go down in lifestyle," and then he'll repeat it a couple of times and get madder and madder and madder about it because it's about a negative opinion. And he goes, you know, if your wife ever comes and says, we got to get rid of a few things, she's talking about you. 
<laughs> That's one of his jokes. And then he'll go, it's serious. Women will not go down in lifestyle. It's like he's considering the situation again, you know. Oh, yeah. 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 And then I had a question about, um, I guess, memorization, like before you go on stage, because that's what I've, I've struggled with. And I think it's a part of just not staying in the moment too, like, you know, you forget like some material and then you uh, just kind of trail off into nowhere. And, uh, but so what is like a rehearsal technique? I mean, you can't teach me the full technique or there, there's no point in having the class, is there? But <laughs> in this free webinar. Well, that, like, that, that is what we do teach, uh, mm -hmm. how to recall your material uh, in normal memory the way you mm. normally remember something like Matthew, I could ask you, what do you have for breakfast this morning? Or what, what did you do yesterday? Or, uh, you know, what is your, you know, what is, um, what was your childhood home? What did it look like? You know, mm -hmm. you would look up and see pictures and start to notice things in the environment and the pictures that you recall from your, from your memory, because it really happened to you. These things, you really did have breakfast or lunch or dinner yesterday. And, and you really did something yesterday and you do have memory of where you grew up. So yeah. all those things really have their, their, their normal memory. And if I ask you that now, those questions, if I asked you tomorrow or I asked you next week, you would probably generally say the same things to me because they're true, but you wouldn't have memorized the words of those, those stories. You yeah. would just know that you would just say the same things, but it would be said different ways. That's what we call uh, reinventing your material. Um, mm. But it's not memorized words. But somehow, we teach you to remember your show rather not, than remember your words. words. Words are just symbols. They only represent 7% of communication. So those words, if you're, all you're doing is worrying about getting, worry about getting words perfect, you're only communicating at 7%. Yeah. In order to get your words perfect, you have to cut off the relationship and the if audience. I, if I say the word to you, yeah. argument, you don't get mad. You can say argument and not get mad. But if I tell you to relive an argument, as you start explaining it, you'll start re-experiencing it and your body will have what are called autonomic body responses. You'll do things, you'll gesture, your face will turn red. All those things will happen because you're in a real scene. You're not trying to remember the word argument. Yeah, wow, I didn't know about that. Yeah, yeah. but Matthew, trust yeah. that. We, we do more about that. We, we get more details and get you uh, to practice. It's deep. It's deep. Are you deep. thinking of deep. signing up, yeah. taking this class? Would you like to talk more about that too? I, w I would if I had uh, a, a lot of money and time. I have to do a class this month in particular. And like they told me not to schedule anything. So that's, I, I can't really schedule that much. Uh, but maybe in the future, because I got a scholarship. And so it's, it's about stand up is like related to it. Yeah. It's, art form that I have to do. This is the art form I presented. And I, yeah. I, I like just getting better any way I can. I mean, generally like stand-ups don't like, like if you go to clubs, they don't, they generally don't, they look down upon people who go to classes because it's not the same thing as like coming up on your That's own. That's okay. That's okay. I've, I've taken, uh, I've had that, I've had to deal with and I'm not here, you know, just because they have learned a different way doesn't mean you can't learn a different way. I think it's smarter. No one takes into account that any art form goes through a, a segment of learning the fundamentals of it, even mm -hmm. music or things like that. You have to learn chords and, and um, melody and all that before you can just do song. And comics that look down on people that take, that's fine. That's only because they did it differently. And yeah. that's that's like saying that somebody else uh, shouldn't take, you know, shouldn't take any take any feedback on how to be a better, better basketball player. It's just BS. Kobe Bryant learned something from somebody. In fact, anybody who does anything in the world well learned it from somebody. Every single one of them, every single one of them learned it from somebody. So it's just BS. It's just ego. I don't need it. And I, I'm too scared anyways to go to a class because they might tell me I'm not funny, but you could go. I'm not. I mean, you know, it's just, it, it, yeah. it's just you know, it is interesting. We battle with that um, because mm -hmm. people are afraid of being judged and all of that. And I think that's a, that's just a level of, of, of not, not understanding that a class can actually save you five years off your, mm -hmm. off your, um, of your development. 
And if you're out there and you're funnier than most of the comics that you've seen on the open mic circuit and they go, oh my God, you're suddenly hilarious and you're better than I, than I am. How did that work? Well, I took a class. Oh, you took a class. Oh, okay. Yeah. So poo poo it all you want. Yeah. But I just invested in my art form and I just yeah. learned some fundamentals that gave me all kinds of um, tips and professional tips on what to do when it's not funny, how to riff, how to work with the audience, how to work with characters, how to get in a relationship, how not to memorize jokes, you know, the four principles of comedy, all kinds of good stuff that you can just use in your art form or anything you're doing. It's, yeah. it's, and then it's, a, it's like a, uh, I think it's a, a tax write-off because it's, it's a class and it, and it doesn't mean, we're not teaching you to be funny. You're already there with that. We're teaching you, we're taking what you're already doing and showing you how it's absolutely working for you and tweaking your abilities, adding a couple of more skills and showing you how to take it further. That's it. Yeah. That's yeah. like, yeah, I mean, that's, it's, it's so funny. It's almost like, how did you learn how to walk as a kid? Did you just fall down a lot? No, that would have hurt. No, yeah. but I did. I, I, my parents got me a little walker and then I, pace myself until I was ready to let go. <laughs> yeah. It's smarter to study something before you just risk mm -hmm. your whole identity on it, you know? So yeah. it's, it's a, it's just a new way to think about it. Um, mm -hmm. and, and comics are the first ones to be mean to you about it. It's really true. Yeah. Yeah. But comics are, are always concerned with what they're not. Okay. I used to do a lot of props. Gayla has one prop in her show one prop and it's just something she puts in her mouth that's all it is and she's had comedians come up and go oh you're a prop comic what do you mean i'm a prop comic because i use this i i even go so far as if i use a prop i say i am not a prop com comic these are visual enhancers because i just i hate that stupid oh you're you're a hat because you use props no i'm a guy who makes people laugh and if i can make somebody laugh with something stupid and hold it up i'm gonna do it yeah yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. like it's like uh, there was someone that said, you know, well, if you don't go on the road or something, you're not a real comic. You know, if you haven't uh, bombed at a hundred clubs, you're not a real comic. You know, wh where is it written? What makes a funny entertainer? What makes a funny comedian? Mm -hmm. You know, your job on stage is to be funny or be entertaining or to be someone people can watch for a time. It's not yeah. to actually, you know. Uh, cuss or berate the audience or talk about your penis or whatever your, your material is, is it's about entertainment we, we we help you focus on that and there's a lot of tips like that that are just genuine from our experience so you have to think about it i mean that example that kevin <laughs> said i do do a bit about something like that and uh, anyway somebody did say that to me and i said oh you so you think i'm a prop comic and so you you're telling me that my whole act sucked because of what you think about me that's why we don't deal in opinions because yeah. they don't help anybody they just make you feel bad you know and they make you double and 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 they second guess yourself like i'll say this real quick kevin that is I think I said to the guy, so you think I'm a prop comic? Okay, well, if I'm a prop comic, then you're a prop comic. He goes, what do you mean? I, I, didn't, I didn't have anything on stage. Oh, yeah, you did. The whole time you were on stage, you were holding on to the mic stand. That's a prop because you're insecure mm -hmm. and you can't let go of the mic stand. The, mics, the only job of the mic stand is to hold the mic. So if you take the mic out, then you need to stop holding on to the mic stand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's like a prop. So you can just wiggle it around when you're insecure. You had another prop too. What? You were holding a drink in your hand the whole time. So you could just pace and, and drink when you felt insecure. You know, mm -hmm. put everything down if you're not, a, you know. I mean, people have so many opinions. Yeah. And you got to stand up for yourself and go, look, I'm doing it the smart way. I'm yeah. learning some skills that, that Eddie Murphy knew, that Stephen Wright knows, that Jerry Seinfeld knows, that, that, uh, uh, that um, Robin Williams knows. I'm, I'm learning skills that, mm -hmm. you know, that make to, to cut down. I don't have all, you know, 40 years to do it the hard way. Why should I? I have somebody who knows how to do it. Yeah. So it's up to you, you know? Yeah. There are no real rules. 
you, you know, jokes, jo you, jokes are just your activity you're doing with the audience. You can do other activities. You can sing songs. You can do improv. You can dance. There's things you can do. Jokes are just one activity. Don't limit yourself to just the one activity. And the rule is if your jokes aren't working, you better sure as hell have some other activity to do with that audience. If, if in the seventies, uh, if somebody, if, if I were working with a student, uh, and he mouthed the words to Minnie Mouse, um, Mighty Mouse songs. I I would just say, I, I, you know, I wouldn't laugh. I I don't I don't quite get it. But Andy Kaufman did that. Okay, that was what he did. What, what was what the hell was he doing? I don't even know because I don't get it to this day. It doesn't. I don't get it. But you know what? It's between him and his audience, and he's famous, and he did it, and somebody connected with it, and it became something. Yeah. There's no rules. There's only one rule, and that every joke must have two things. Two parts. Every joke has two parts. It's the only rule. If there's not two parts, there's not a joke. Yeah. 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 Well, to thank you uh, both for this presentation and thank you for um, answering my questions. And I will really, I, I will think about uh, taking the course. The only thing is um, the distance between here and LA. That will probably be, you know, I'll walk, but it's, you know, it'll be. Oh, that we're is. talking to <laughs> We're talking to you guys. We have we got a couple guys that study with us from England, man. It's a bitch for them. It just really is. <laughs> the swimming. Really <laughs> shitty drive. It's a real uh, traffic just sucks in Birmingham about this time of year. Yeah. Just write I, all your excuses on one page. I just want to hear all of it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I love it, dude. I'm glad you came. Learn something. I hope you learned something out of this. I hope you got something out of this and it was enriching. Yeah. Give you something to think about. You know, that's why we do yeah. you know, free classes. Yeah. Kind of get your comedy comedy juices going. So yeah, but keep Look, in touch. I Obviously, yes. we're we're obviously we're a business and we want to stay in business. Yay. But I think that you have probably seen that we care about what you're trying to do. I mean, yeah. and there's no way you can get past that with us. We're going to care when I, <laughs> when when you're you know, if I know you're doing a bit on Michael Jackson and I think of a Michael Jackson joke while I'm swimming, I'm going to come back and I'm going to give you that Michael Jackson joke because I am not going to do a Michael Jackson joke today. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you guys. And, you got uh, it. Have a great night. Take you care. Too. Thank you, Kevin. All thank right. you. Bye. Thank you so much.